Hi guys and welcome back. So this all sounds good so far, we have a strong melody, we have all the drums we could wish for, but it's still not sounding very natural. To help with this we're going to start adding plug-in effects to these sounds to help them all sit better in the mix together. The first thing I want to do is add a delay effect to the melody as it's a little bit boring sounding without any effects on it at the moment. Now we can add plugins from many different places but the easiest is just to click the little E button on the channel. So click on the track in question, the one you want to affect, and click the E button. Here we have the channel settings for the pluck melody. This gives us control over the frequency balance, send effects which are on the right side, and on the left we can add insert effects. At the moment we're working on the pluck channel as I said, but if I click on the kick for example, it changes to kick and we can now change the settings for the kick. If your window has just disappeared when you clicked off the screen, just make sure you have this option here. Right click in this little space here and choose always on top. You can also get from one channel to another by clicking the up and down arrows here. So now we're back on the pluck channel. Let's add a delay. Click on the inserts, click on delay, and we're gonna be using stereo delay. Now, if you're using Cubase Elements, AI or LE, then you won't have the Stereo Delay plugin. But fear not, there's a really great free Stereo Delay plugin you can download and use. We've put a link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you have the full course, you'll find the video on how to install it and use the Delay plugin in the Extra Videos folder in the Work Files. It's very, very similar to the Cubase Stereo Delay plugin, so you can just copy the settings I'm going to show you now. So let's load up this stereo delay plugin, and it's pretty simple to use. This ring on the left side shows you how long you'll get between each repeat of the delay on the left audio channel, and yes, you've guessed it, the right ring controls the right delays. At the moment, it's set to one bar, which means it's only gonna repeat every bar, which is far too long. So let's set them both to a quarter bar, and let's have a listen. Now the delay effect is a little bit loud, as you can hear, so let's turn down the mix, which is this knob here. It's currently on 50, let's turn it down to about 20, let's say. You can do it on the slider knob here, or you can just double click and type in the amount you want. So type in 20, hit return. It doesn't matter that they're ever so slightly different. And let's make the left delay slightly different, so we'll offset it. And this is where you'll find that the stereo part of this delay really kicks in. So let's change this to quarter dotted, which is quarter and a half. And let's have a listen. Now you can really hear the stereo effect kicking in now. We just need to lower the feedback amount on the left side. As this delay is a little bit longer, it now carries on for a little bit too long. So we'll change this down maybe 40 or 37 or so. Have one final listen. Perfect. So one last thing we want to do here, but it's very, very important, and that is to tidy up the frequencies a little bit, which is a really good habit to get into. To do this, we're gonna use the EQ, which is here. It's short for equalization, and when I play the project, you'll see the frequencies come up here. So these are just the frequencies of the pluck melody that we're working on at the moment. If this is all new to you, then just know that the left-hand side is where all the low frequencies reside, and the right-hand side is where all the high frequencies reside. And of course, the mid-frequencies are in the middle. And just to give you an example, I'm gonna sweep the low-cut filter, so I'm gonna click on this button here and drag upwards whilst the track is playing, and you'll be able to hear that that will start cutting away some of the low frequencies. I'm just going to solo this so it's actually a bit more obvious. And you can hear the bass frequencies coming back into it as I sweep back down. The opposite will happen if I sweep the high cut. and I'm sure you've heard that effect before many, many times. 
And you can see from this particular instrument that the frequencies are mainly in the mid to high end. But we do have these lower frequencies that come in from time to time. The basic rule in mixing is this. Only the elements that we want to sound bassy should have bass in them. So that's basically the kick, which we already have in the project, and the bass line, which we'll be adding very soon. Apart from that, most of the elements don't want to have much bass, if any at all. The reason is that you want to keep the low end as clear as possible, so nothing conflicts with the kick and the bass, which are very, very important aspects of any track and most styles. Don't worry, if you don't quite understand this yet, it will all become clearer as the course progresses. So all we're going to do now is use this low cut filter to take out some of the very low frequencies. Just the ones that are not needed. And to make the slope a little bit steeper, I'm just going to click on this 12 and make it 48. And now you can see the roll off curve, which is taking away the low frequencies, is a little bit steeper. So don't go too much with this, because you'll take out too much of the bass. But we do want to take out just enough to make way for our kick and bass line. So just a little side note for anyone using Cubase AI or LE, you won't have these filter controls right here, but you can come up to inserts and add an EQ called Studio EQ, and you can set to band one. If you set it to cut, you can adjust it in a similar way on the Studio EQ plugin. It's not quite as steep, but it's okay. Okay, so that's the EQ done, and it's sounding much better. Now we need to add a bit of depth to the elements that we have, and we're gonna do this with reverb. Now reverb is one of those effects that will go on pretty much every single element in a mix, but we're not gonna put a reverb plugin on every single track, that would be nuts. There's a much easier way to do this. We'll basically set up one global reverb, and we'll just send as much of each element to it as we want. Again, don't worry if that sounds a bit complicated at the moment. It really isn't, and you'll see soon that it's a really great tool to be able to use. It's called a send effect. As usual with Cubase, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. The first is to right click in the space in the project window and choose add effect track, or you can go to plus and add effect track this way. So just choose the effect you want on your effect channel. I'm gonna use Roomworks SE, the most basic reverb that's available, and I'm just going to name it Main Reverb. And add track. And as you saw there, just make sure it's set to stereo. So it's just gonna quickly close that down and just show you where it is. Just turn off the lower zone for a second. Come into the effect channel here, Main Reverb. Click Edit Settings, and there is our reverb plugin on the left-hand side. So just gonna click the E button to get the settings up for the reverb. The first and most important thing to do when using a send effect like this is to set the mix to 100%. At the moment it's 40, so I'm just gonna push that up to 100. This is because we only want to hear the reverb coming out of this channel, and we don't want any of the original signal getting through. I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. So let's just give this some basic settings. The reverb time, I'm just gonna push that up to 2.0 seven seconds it's not a huge reverb but it's enough to give the sounds some kind of depth so that's going to be really nice so at the moment the reverb isn't actually doing anything as nothing is being sent to it so let's send something to it and let's hear the result so let's use the pluck so it's just going to click on the pluck channel and you can see we are now affecting the pluck channel and just for a moment i'm going to bypass the delay effect so we can just hear the reverb now, if you remember before, I mentioned the send section on the right hand side, we'll just click on an empty one. And here we have our options of where we can send it to. We're gonna choose main reverb. So at the moment, we're still not gonna be getting any reverb. That's because we haven't turned it on and turned up the send amount. So let's do that now. And if you're still not getting any reverb, all you need to do is just unsolo it and solo it again. And doing that just makes sure that the effect down here gets soloed as well. So now we have the melody being soloed and the effect channel as well. And you can hear there's quite a lot of reverb on there, which you can adjust with the send level.
So just change the send level to suit your taste. So by using this send effect, we're not affecting the original signal, we're just simply adding the reverbed signal to it. And this allows us to have one global plugin, as I mentioned before, and we can send multiple elements to it, all with their own custom level of reverb. Pretty neat, huh? And there's an even simpler way of setting this up, which we'll get to when we start looking at adding sound effects later in the course. But I wanted to show you this now, as it makes understanding how sends work a little bit easier. So let's send some more elements to our lovely shiny new reverb. Now, I don't really want to go into every single channel and manually add a reverb send to every single one. There's a far easier way to do that. It's a little shortcut, which I'm going to show you now. Just close down the settings for a second. We're going to select all the channels that I want reverb on just by holding down Control or Command. So let's say you wanted that one and that one and that one. Or you can, if you want to do a whole selection together, highlight the first one, hold Shift, highlight the bottom one and you'll get them all selected in between as well. And as we've already done the pluck, I'm just going to hold down Control and click pluck to deselect it. And I'm going to take the solo off and I'm going to select the kick as well. So I'm going to reactivate my lower zone, go to the mix console. Now I know this is your first real look at the mixer in Cubase and don't worry, we'll get to this all in good time. But right now I want you to click the three dots in the top left hand corner, which shows a few extra controls. Now we're going to hit the quick link button and this will temporarily link any tracks that you have selected. So these ones here. So if I wanted to, I could change all the volumes together like so. So I'm just going to bring up one of the channel settings with them all highlighted still. Click on the send and add the main reverb. And I'm not going to activate it at the moment because they're all selected. We'll just adjust each one to taste. Okay, so now I'm just going to select the kick only. So we're only affecting the kick. And now I'm going to add just a tiny amount of reverb. You don't want much on a kick. Just something to give it a little bit extra body. Maybe something around there. Just be careful, if you add a bit too much reverb to something like a kick, then it's going to get quite muddy. So just be careful on the send amount. Let's go to the closed hat. We'll solo it. And again, just add a little bit, just to give a bit of space around that hat. I'm going to go through the rest of the sounds and add a similar amount to each one. It's all very rough at the moment, but we'll be fine tuning this all as we go. And in the mixing stage, of course, we'll be doing it in a lot more detail. So it doesn't matter if it's not super accurate at the moment. So while I'm here, I might as well do the EQ for each channel as well. So if you remember, we took off the low end of the pluck melody. I'm going to do the same on each of these channels as well. So that's all the EQ and reverb sends done. Now, don't forget to come back to the pluck and reactivate the stereo delay. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, so I'm sure you agree that sounds a lot, lot better than what we had at the start of this lesson. So that's it for the free lessons. We really hope that you enjoyed getting started in Cubase and maybe you already feel like you know enough to be able to go away and make your own music, which is really awesome. But if you want to learn how to make the rest of this track and learn loads more about Cubase, how to synthesize bass lines, how to arrange tracks, how to record guitar, how to record vocals, how to mix an entire song, plus loads more, then check out the link in the description to see the full course. So just a reminder of what you can make if you finish the course. I'm going to say goodbye and let the track play in full. Thank you very much for watching guys and girls. Hopefully see you in the course. We're going down, it's a fight for survival We're too headstrong, never wanna be wrong Now we're going down a road that we can't come back from The damage is being done from
us, we're never gonna give up We got a long way to go, but we'll make it up We'll never stop till the wrongs are righted And we stop the blame and divide it Can you see? Do you even wanna see? That is all because we forgot we're from We are the children of the stars We are the children And they 